Since I've been using these sorts of folding phones that can change their size, their shape, their aspect ratio, I have tried I don't know how many different web browsers at this point because most of them just don't behave all that well. Sometimes they look fine on this screen and then you go to this screen and the UI doesn't refresh correctly. And especially if you then go back to this screen, things get really, really weird. There are very few browsers that seem to know what to do with these sorts of devices. In fact, I've really come down to like two that I feel really confident with. And one is Google Chrome, the other is Samsung Internet, even though I absolutely despise the name of that browser because internet and browser are two different things. It should be Samsung Internet Browser, perhaps would be a better name. The biggest problem with Samsung Internet is that maybe you're like this as well. I need to have the same browser on my phone as I do on my computer because I want that synergy. I want the bookmarks to sync. I want my tabs to sync. It bothers me to use one browser on my phone and another browser on my computer. In fact, I made a video showing how you could kind of make Samsung internet on your phone sync that kind of stuff with your Chrome browser, and it worked okay, but today we finally have a real proper solution, and it's one that I don't think anybody really saw coming. Samsung Internet is now available on Windows. I'm gonna put a link down below to the Microsoft Store listing, and I'm gonna kind of show you how well this actually does work. So first thing you gotta do is install Samsung Internet. And once it's done, what you're gonna determine, what you're gonna see here, is a web browser that is very clearly based on Chrome. It looks like a dark theme for Chrome with a few minor tweaks made to it. Now, of course, on your Android device of choice, you can go to the Google Play Store and install Samsung Internet Browser, and everything is going to pretty much be up and running. All you gotta do is sign in by clicking on this little three line that hamburger menu, as people call it, go down to settings, and then look for sync with Samsung Cloud. Now you're gonna need to sign into your Samsung account on your phone, as well as in the browser. I think you'll actually be forced to do that when you first launch that browser. If not, I'll show you where to go to set that up. We're gonna turn that on, and you can also click on this, and then kind of customize what exactly you want to be syncing. You can see that it is now pulling my data from my desktop browser from the Samsung Cloud. And here shortly, I'm going to have all of this stuff flowing between both devices. My bookmarks will be there. Here you can see that we are synced. And if I go into my bookmarks, you can see that they are all in fact there. That is the link for your bookmarks. Let's pull this back up and we will see there's a little icon there that says you click on that and that's where you're gonna go to sign in and do all of that kind of stuff there as well. You can see sync now, you can change what exactly you are syncing. And so at that point you are up and running. So one thing I also wanna show you about this browser when you are using your mobile device is some of the really interesting features that you have access to, like the fact that you do have access to ad blockers. Now we can go into add-ons, but as you can see, the only add-ons you can currently do are ad blockers. Now I do wanna say before you know you start installing ad blockers, please do use them ethically. Understand that many content creators like myself would not be able to be doing what I'm doing if not for ads. So don't just ubiquitously block ads everywhere, block them on websites that are, that are you know way over the top, that are unusable. We all know the websites that are just unusable without some sort of an ad blocker. If you click on this, you can very quickly just install something like Adblock Plus for Samsung Internet, it takes you to the Play Store, we're going to install that. And now when we go back, you can go ahead and enable that and you should not be seeing ads at that point with this web browser. So that is a very important thing. Again, use them ethically, but we all know how many mobile websites in particular are just absolutely unusable because of the number of ads being shoved down your throat on them. Now, strangely enough, on the desktop, if you click on the little menu thing there, you go to add-ons and you click on add-ons, it does take you to the Chrome web store because this is based on Chrome. You should be able to install Chrome extensions. I can't click on this stuff though. Let's go down and let's look at like Google Translate and for whatever reason, add to Chrome is grayed out. Now this is, I believe, the very first release of this browser. So it's possible that this functionality is going to be coming 
at a later date. I hope that it will because that's a pretty big one for me. Like I need to be able to install my Chrome extensions like Dark Reader and things like that. But I'm imagining that's probably something that's coming. What I want to do here really quickly is show you how this thing actually works really well on foldable devices. No shock, it was made to run on these devices like the Z Fold. So of course, even on phones like the OnePlus Open, it's going to work really quite well. When you're on your cover display, you have a lot of your menus sort of appearing down here at the bottom, your tabs, your settings, home, bookmarks, and then you have your actual address up here at the top. When you open the device, it's going to sort of reflow this and it's going to move everything up here to the top. You're gonna to get your tabs shown up here as well. And like I said, if you close it back again, it's not gonna glitch out and do anything weird like some other browsers will on occasion. This one just seems to go back and forth with no trouble at all. Really, really well executed. Now, if we jump into our settings, I'll show you a couple of other potentially interesting things here as well. Let's go into layouts and menus, or I guess I should say layout and menu. You can change the address bar to be down at the bottom. You can also change if you wanna see your tabs always or only on the large screen. You can even customize the menus, like what you're gonna be seeing down there. That is unpleasant, oh my goodness, okay. Let's uh, cover that up. So like, I don't really care about the home screen thing. So we're gonna drag that down here and get rid of that. But I do find it useful to have always access to the desktop version of websites. So we'll drag that up there and then we're gonna go back and now that should be what I'm seeing down here at the bottom. Exactly, exactly as I wanted it. And then there's my tabs down there as well. Back into settings again, and let's go to useful features. How about background play? How cool is that? Keep playing video sound after you leave a tab or Samsung internet. Some websites don't support background play. So we can turn that on and if you're watching a video, you swipe up to go home and it's going to continue playing that in the background. That might be something that's cool for you. This is one I'd probably turn off. If I click a link that's going to you know, Instagram or threads or whatever, I want it to open in the app, not in the web browser. It's good you can actually turn that off. So as you can see there, guys, it is a pretty darn solid looking web browser that just works as you would expect, works well on these foldable devices. Assuming Samsung can figure out the desktop extensions thing, I can actually see this being a browser that I could switch to on all of my devices and have the synergy that I've been looking for. I'm not sacrificing any functionality of my extensions potentially in the future. And I'm gaining the use of what I think is quite important for some websites, an ad blocker, on my mobile device. But I'd love to know what you guys think about this. Would you consider using Samsung internet across your devices? Let me know in the comments down below, guys. I'll see you on the next one. And until next time, stay nerdy.